That's all good. So I hope everybody's aware that and that was done behind bars. Like, that's what I wanted to get into. Yeah. Ooh, you just don't know. That's, that's what I wanted to get into. You this just man, don't know. This man was locked up and then gave us a real quality, quality product. I'm like, I want to ask you, how did you do that? I bet you the only podcast in the whole entire world that has done that. I bet you the only podcast in the world. How, how I did that. That's why this, this is what happened. Um, so um, when I got sentenced, um, I was I was I was afraid I would lose my mind because what on earth are you going to do for five years? Right. And well, you, you were sentenced mean, so, for 10. So you thought you were going to go in for 10, right? So I, was, so I was in for 10. I was sentenced to 10 and I thought it was the end of me. Right. Yeah, I thought it was the end of me. Top, top, top. Three, two, one. Top, 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 top hill episode. 159. Welcome to another episode of the Top Hill Podcast. This is your boy, Mr. Top Hill Pod, a.k.a. E-Money Boss. And I'm your girl, Jamila, with her own boss. Guys, <laughs> I know you guys probably thought, like, are they going live today? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. I know it's wow, late. Wow, look I know it's late. This. I don't think we've ever started this late. This is, the, this is probably the latest we ever started. Wow. But um, this is great. This, this is a very, very, very special episode we had to do it. Um, we had to do this tonight, guys. Um, I'm so excited guys. to bring you guys our special guest today because you guys know him. Y'all don't really know you, him. You may not, you, but you hear him all the time, all the time. And man, this guy has an incredible story. He's incredibly talented. His work ethic is insane. What phenomenal! And his level of professionalism is through the roof. The roof. And yo, I I just can't wait for you guys to meet him. If you guys don't know who he is already, <laughs> y'all, our next guest, as we wait for this one minute, is coming live from South Africa. Yes, yes, y'all. So, I know big South Africa in the building. Shout man. out to everybody across that water that's still woke. That's up with Top Hill Pod tonight, like this morning, rather. Yeah, no, y'all, y'all, y'all. We appreciate you guys so much. Like y'all can't even imagine. Like y'all support is just. Mm. Even the ones who are working on the late night right now, you know what I mean. You guys are choosing to listen to us while you're working, you know, overnight and stuff like that. Like I really, really appreciate y'all, man. Like, cause you guys could be anywhere in the world on that world wide web. But you're here with us. But you're here with the Top Hill Podcast. Are we young? We yes. on, brother. Oh, oh. He's probably like, why is she so excited? I cannot wait to tell you why I'm so excited. <laughs> we, we is on. Let me make sure everybody can see you all right. Give me one. Give I always had love for this guest, y'all. But I became a fan. Like, you don't even know how hard of a fan. What was it, like last week? Like yeah. two weeks ago? Yeah, man. <laughs> And I was like, what? We got to get him back on here. I said, we got to get him on here. And then that's when he told me the news. Right. Yeah. I had know. no idea. Y'all cannot wait to share this with y'all. It, it, it's kind of my bad. She didn't know. She had no idea what was going on with you at all. At all. N not, even a, not even a little teeny bit. I had just knew of you and was just so thankful and appreciative of you like i was just like oh thank you anybody that supports the top the top hill podcast but then when people do go above and beyond for the podcast i'm just like oh my god i love this guy but then when i found out <laughs> the circumstances it just took it to a whole nother level i was like you better you better get the hell out of here you better get out of here so the jingles and everything were, were, were produced against all odds, like you wouldn't believe. I didn't know. I was just like, first of all, I just love sometimes, like when you guys are just performing at such a high quality level. And when I just say you guys, I just mean anybody that's just like not here in the states because we're just so used to it here. You know what I mean? So it's just like it's a norm here. So when people have low quality here, I'm just like y'all are just really weak. Like there's no reason why you have such low quality uh stuff here. Like there's no reason. So like when you guys are in Africa just killing it the way you're doing it, like what? Thanks. And then for your circumstances, I, my mind is still blown. Like, I've been telling everybody about you. Like, it's such a big deal to me. Like, I'm so proud of you. For real? I swear. I swear. Mm. You still got that top hill. Top 
They don't even know yet. Hold they on, hold don't on. even know let yet. Let me give my man a proper introduction real quick. Hold on, man. If you guys don't know, let me go ahead and throw a little something on that, that might jog up. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Y'all heard that before. <laughs> the South African MC, beat maker, artist extraordinaire, our brother, Stanic, NMZ. Let me give my brother another round of yes. applause, man. What are we talking about right now? Come on, man. <laughs> what are we talking about right now, man? Stanic NMZ, thank you so much for gracing the Top Hill podcast, man. We really greatly appreciate it. Um, first things first, man. How are you doing, man? How's everything going on your end? Bro, I'm happy. Like, I can't get used to the freedom. You know, you know, I've been like back in there for the past couple of years, like half a decade and stuff like that. So, man, I can't, I can't describe the, the freedom, being back with the family, being back doing what I love and all that. I mean, and I appreciate, I appreciate all the love and support you guys have given me and showed me in the past couple of years. Hey, man, I'm, do do? I'm, I'm doing good, man. It's, man. it's I was so happy to see the news, man. I just happened to be, you know, on, on YouTube and I happened to see a video that you posted. I was like... But you know it's not a coincidence. We had just spoke on you. Like, it was just so did. crazy. Like, let's just go back. Let First of all, let everybody know, like, who you are and what we're talking about before we even just start going into it. Because we was definitely about to go there. <laughs> yeah, we was about to go right there. I'm Stanek and I'm dead. You know, you know you're like NMZ. I know uh, in, in America... <laughs> Uh, it's a Z. In Africa, we did it in England, if I'm not mistaken. It's a Z. That's mm -hmm. why we call the Z alphabet. In the whole world. In the whole world, everybody says it except for America. We're the only ones that say Z. <laughs> yeah, so I'm standing in MZ, uh, and my, 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 my government name is Sanga Pungane, and I'm from South Africa, uh, somewhere in Johannesburg. I'm, I'm basically from the Eastern Cape where Nelson Mandela is from, but I'm, I'm from... I'm from Johannesburg, and um, I'm a, I'm an artist, a rapper, a producer, and um, I just happened to find myself on the other side, on the wrong side of the law, and then I, I spent like the the past five years or so behind bars, and I just uh, I'm out on parole. Uh, so yeah, that's what I do. Like, and uh, I mean, a few words. Yo, man. Well, I like I said when I seen um that video, I was just so happy to see that you're out. And, you know, that, that you can be home with your family and your people, man, um, and back into society. And, you know, just tell us, man, what, what are your initial thoughts? Like, how does it feel to be, you know, outside of those walls, man? Well, um, best feeling ever. You know, in a way, it's like being taken away and you don't have, like, any access to anything. Like, got, ha have everything, like, taken away from you. Uh, in a way, you get to appreciate it more. You understand? Yeah. So now a lot has changed. Like a lot has changed. Like um, you know, you know. L l let me just make an example. Uh, you spend uh like half a decade away from substance, things like alcohol and all that stuff, and then you you get to uh know yourself better. Like you get to realize certain things you didn't know about yourself because you know you know how it is. Every weekend turn up and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So being a way that you, you get to learn a few things about yourself. And then um, uh, and after a couple of years, like imagine taking away like five years away from everything else. Like I'd be crazy to go back to that lifestyle. Right. So, so now I'm happy. My mind is clearer. Uh, everything, everything. Like the colors are brighter. My wow. taste buds like taste better. I can hear birds. <laughs> yes. Like yes. Multiplied. And you, you understand? So it feels great. I get to hang with the kids. I get to hang with the family. Now, I can, I, I can, as much as I'm still on, on house arrest, I can't do anything I want to do, but it's better than it was before. So, right. yeah. How different is it now than it was before you went in? It's totally different because a lot, a lot of things have changed, like especially things like the cruise. I mean, the, the old crew is going to hang around with the, raw, with, with the old crew because things have changed. Like, I, don't lo I no longer have the same habits or do the same things I used to do for fun. So things have changed now because um, when you're in there, you think about all the time you miss 
mm-hmm. and uh, on on important things uh you couldn't do anymore uh time you couldn't spend because because i i miss my daughter's first everything like a first mm. day of school things like those so now I, I know exactly what's important to me so now every chance i get i make sure that i, I hold on to tight to everything i mean so uh so everything that i do whether it's my side, my other side hustles, whether it's the music, whether it's the clothing, whether it's uh, content and everything that I do now, I just make sure that I give it all. You understand? Because because you might never know, I might never know when it might get taken away from me again. So right. I make sure that I, I enjoy everything to the fullest and I give it my all. Right. And so you get to really, you really get to appreciate what you, what you, what you lost and everything like that. And going back to what Jamila said, like, you know, five years is a long time. Like a lot has changed in just five years. You know what I mean? Like that's that's COVID time. It's been hard to change. adjust being on the outside yeah, this just, last five outside. years. So I can only imagine what it was like for you to actually like go in and then come back out. Like how life has changed, how the internet has changed. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much COVID affected you guys or how your experience was with the pandemic while you were inside. Music has changed. You know, too. You know, the great thing you know, the, 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 the amazing thing is, well, it's not amazing, but I missed everything. Like, I missed the beginning of COVID. I missed the ending. So I, I didn't experience COVID anyway on, on the outside. Uh, but as far as change, a lot has changed. Like, uh, just two days ago, I was at McDonald's. So now <laughs> they've got this machine where you set up service. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my word. I'm about to embarrass myself. I'm like, I'm about to embarrass myself. I don't know how to use this. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah, so, um, even the technology, like uh, right now, like when you go to pain points, you, you've got the card tapping, uh, you pay with your phone and all that. So I feel like I feel like I'm behind with everything. But, you know, it's all good. It's and never too late, inside. man. It's never too late. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you right on time. You really right on time. Yeah. Yeah. And in South Africa, there's a new genre of music called Ama Piano. Oh, we yeah. know about it. We know about it. Yeah, that 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 almost missed me as well. Because <laughs> because it came out, I, I went in in 2018. I think it's it kicked in in South Africa in 2019. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh my word! Like everything has changed. Different dress move, uh, dance code, uh, different uh, swag. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So yeah, so I, I'm a huge that, fan of that Amo piano I though. Mm-hmm. Again. Know what I mean? Yeah. Are you gonna get into that Amo piano bag? Well, um, I, I've got a few tracks. Like I did a few okay. tracks because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an artist. You just I, experimenting. So anything that feels, yeah. So it's and, and it's not like I'm gonna switch up to my piano, but I can write the I can write the vibe for for, for a bit because I do everything. Uh, if I if I'm in that gospel spiritual mood i'll do that if i'm feeling sunday jazzy i'll do that i mean so yeah i'm i'm a piano all the way that's amazing and shout out to hindu for asking um that question in the chat as well too guys if you guys any if you guys have any questions for our guests um make sure you guys put it in the comments and um we'll make sure we try to get to as many of the questions um as possible by the end of this interview so um yeah man don't be shy man we got a dope artist, music producer right here. So, um, static, like it's so crazy because I remember you reached out to us and you said you had some beats and, um, you know, you were just like, you know, Hey, here's, here's some options. You know what I mean? Just let me know what you think. And I heard that part. I was like, that's the one, like, that's <laughs> it. I didn't even know I needed it. But once I seen it, uh-huh. I had to have it. I, I was have like, a that question, was it. though. But be, even before all of that, because clearly he's an artist and his mind is working. How yeah. did you hear about Top Hill? Oh, great question. Guys, but, okay, uh, for some reason, I don't know, I don't know how, but um, <laughs> we, we got the same, what do you call the, the, the model that they use to match, uh, let's say, let's say people are into hip hop and uh, with those, with those. The uh, algorithm. Uh, <laughs> The album, thank you so much. Yeah. So I, I think I, I feel right. I, I qualified for whatever. I don't know what your market is exactly, but it was right in my algorithm. So it just came to me. So it just popped up to me. And I was like, this is exactly what I need to. And uh, one thing I saw is that you guys were, were still starting. You were nothing close to 30,000. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, we were babies. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was always like this the perfect time to hop on. You, you understand? And you so, like, came like, right so on time. Like, like I just want to say thank yeah. you. You came right on time. You really yeah, did. Yeah, not that too big because <laughs> it was gonna be probably gonna be so hard. <laughs> no, we want you to make another one. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you could. I was going to say you could always send me stuff, man. It's all good. Uh, it's all good. So I hope everybody's aware that that was done behind bars. That's I, what I, I wanted to get into. Oh, you just don't know. That's, that's what I wanted to get into. You this just man, don't know. This man was locked up and then gave us a yeah. real quality, quality product. I'm like, I want to ask you, how did you do that? Like, how did how how did you set this up? I bet you the only podcast in the whole entire world that has done that. I bet you the only podcast in the world. I bet. <laughs> do you think you do you think there's any other podcast that's got production done from inside? <laughs> Bro, did you send any other podcast your beats? No, we haven't. We don't know about anybody else either. Nah, not at all. I think I think I think Top Hill is the only podcast that wow. had it's it's, it's 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 production done from from inside. Okay, cool. As far as the question, uh, how how I did that? That's what this this is what happened. Um, so uh, when I got sentenced, um, I was I was I was afraid I would lose my mind because what on earth are you gonna do for five years? Right. And well, you were sentenced for so ten, so you thought you were gonna go in for ten, right? So, so, so I was in for 10. I was sentenced to 10, and I thought it was the end of me. Right. I thought it was the end of me. Mm. So, so, so I, uh, I had to uh, brainstorm and think, how am I going to make it past this 10? So what I did is I started writing. started writing. I was like, okay, the, the, the least I can do is start writing. So um, my verses got so so many that I was like, I really need to record this this verses. So um, what I did is I managed to uh, sneak in... Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we don't want to incriminate yourself at all. We good. We good. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, studies, so I started doing my recording in there, but I was like, oh my God, that's, that's, I need to improve the quality. So I, I, I needed an approach uh, as to how I can get in a computer or a studio in the, in the, in the prison, and which I don't think has ever been done. Uh, so what I did is I, I thought of a great approach. I was like, uh, what's one thing that the system would like to do for inmates? I was like, okay, rehabilitation is the main purpose right. for, for our prison systems. So I was like, okay, what can I contribute uh, to the rehabilitation? And then I, I thought, um, since in prison, let me, I don't know if you, don't, if you know this, uh, and I don't know if you got this in America. So in prison, they have <laughs> many things that are cool. They've right. got uh, many skills you can learn, maybe uh, carpentry and all that stuff. So what happened is uh, they had they, they they had music instruments in my prison. They had music instruments, mm -hmm. and so I used that as a, as an opportunity. So what I what I said is I told the head that with all these opportunities you're giving these guys, when these guys go home, they don't have anything. They're leaving the music instruments. They're leaving all the things the foundation have. How about um, we help them? have something they can use when they get outside, like a recording, you understand? Mm -hmm. So they were like, okay, uh, I don't think uh, the, 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 the government can uh, sponsor a, a recording studio. I was like, no, I can speak to a few people and then I can try to see what they can donate. Mm -hmm. Knowing that I've got my own people <laughs> that, right. uh, bring to me and all that. I mean, so uh, I, made the, 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 I wrote down the proposals and uh, it took a few years. It took about two years. And then slowly but surely it started getting approved and all that. And then I managed to bring in the computer, got the sound card, got the mic. And then I started, because I, I was doing it as if I was giving back to the, to the other inmates. So that when they go home, they have actual projects that they can start selling and all that thing outside. So in a, wor in a way, it worked uh, for a lot of them. Because I, I produced over 60 artists. So wow. that's about 60 projects wow. for different artists. And when they left the, 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 the system, they were able to uh, pursue whatever they were trying, whether it's selling hard copies or going to perform and wait things or events or whatnot. At least what I was trying to do was working. Uh, so the biggest problem started when I, I lacked uh, some support. You know what happens is behind bars, uh, you need 
toiletry, you need mm-hmm. uh, different food because the food there is not all there and stuff like that. Of course, so I was like, right. Uh, how can I make a bit of guap? How can I make a bit of mullah? Do you understand? So I yeah. was like, okay, cool. Uh, let me start off and see if I can't help out with uh, anything like adverts and podcasts and all of that stuff. So that's what I did. I started reaching out to guys like you. Uh, thank God, because because the main motivation, the mo- main motivator was Tabel. Because the first time I spoke to y'all, you were like, okay, let's see what you got. I uh, did something. I think I did a couple of uh, ideas. I sent them back to you, and you're like, this is it. So from there, I was like, yo, it's possible. It's possible. And How did I, it? I did quite a few things. I did quite a few things. I, I, I don't think. Uh, I think it's too soon on my parole to talk about. Okay. Which, uh, you know, it was worked out for the best. How did it feel when you heard us put your uh, your song on our podcast and you hear it on all of our podcasts? Yo, yo I celebrated as if it was on the, at, the, at, the, at the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, like I heard it at the FIFA World Cup. <laughs> it was you. Yes. I just first, love first, that for you. Yeah, first of all, for me, it was huge because um, it was um, it was actual an actual platform using something that I, that I had made. Second of all, it was that it's international, so uh, you know, like a lot of things we do, like hip hop, like the hip hop we do is is, is uh, derives from the United States. So we look up to the state. So so everybody, if you make it in the state, you've made it. Right. So I felt like I made it in a way because. Nah, I mean, yeah. yeah, you made it. You made it to the top, top hill, by top the way. Top hill, <laughs> yes. And and I want to let you know officially, you are top hill family, man, for life, bro. I want to let you know that right now. Like your your sound, your artistry, you are plugged in to us, bro. Like your family. Like I'm in my head trying to figure out how I get you to America. Like I'm just so. <laughs> We're gonna bring you to impressed. the cookout, man. <laughs> Like, I'm just so impressed. Like, what I heard all that you did while you were there, like, literally, like, I just found out. Like, we've had you on the podcast now for, for what? Years. It was, for a couple years. years. Yeah, it's been years. Like, you guys can look at all, all of our most popular videos and stuff like that. That outro is standing in MZ. So, and it's going to be, it's definitely going to be. Um, it's just so crazy because I, I had. You guys were... Okay, sorry. Oh no! I was just saying it was just so crazy because just randomly we were speaking on you. Be you, he. I guess you were kind of like MIA from the internet, and we yeah. were speaking on the um the track. And I think we were talking about redoing it. I think mm-hmm. we was we're in the middle of rebranding. We're changing our podcast and things like that. For those of you who haven't noticed it, so I think we were like maybe we should get a new uh new outro too. But we definitely were still saying we really still love it. We really still love it. I was like, well, maybe we need to talk to him again about maybe redoing another. The one no, he was like, Well, you know, Stanick is locked up. I was like, Locked <laughs> up. I thought you I do. No, I didn't know he was locked up. She was like, That sound quality doesn't sound like he's been like produced what? in a prison. I, like, said, <laughs> I said, He got locked up after he was like, No, he made this song while he was locked up. I'm just, yeah. I'm still blown away. It's only been a couple of weeks, so this is still new to me. Like, I'm still just blown away. But this just goes to your yes, work yes. ethic. And like your creativity uh-huh. and your and your skill set, like you were able to find a way out of no way to be able to create, produce, and inspire. Because you're not only doing this to help yourself, but you did this to help the other inmates around you as well too, to give them some inspiration and them some light. You know what I mean? Which is super dope, man. Man, you're so smart. I am so impressed. I am so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And I, I checked you guys where we were in Africa not too long ago. Yes, yes. So I, Not I, you guys. <laughs> it, it was it, one. It, it was me. It, it was, was me. Him. Um, I, yeah, I uh, recently I recently went to, to Kenya. I spent time in Nairobi and uh, Mombasa. Mm-hmm. And um, I, had a, I had an amazing time out there. They give you an African name. You got an African name at least. Yeah, yeah. I, so it's crazy. Like my my parents, you know, they're both just Black American, but my dad has always been very Afrocentric. So he wanted to make sure that me and my brother had mm-hmm. African names. Um, you know, even though we're yeah. we're born in America, so he gave me the name Imani, which means faith. So I've always had this connection for Africa. You know, even just having an African name, and then and then having my father. So Imani, Imani means faith. 
Yes, no, it's Swahili for uh, faith. Yeah, you, you, like you wouldn't like imagine. I told myself one thing I should give you guys is African names, and then first thing um, I, I had in mind was in Zulu. Okay, is Temba, and Temba means Temba means faith. In Zulu. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I actually yeah. am African. I I lived in Africa for middle school. My dad is Sudanese. Which oh okay, you went to Sudan. Yeah. Nah, that, that's awesome. He, you guys should pull up in South Africa. That's where the vibes at. South we want to open. Honestly, Honestly. <laughs> We we you know we put out a video and stuff like that. We're we're gonna do a poll too to see see what our fan base wants, but. We were looking at, like, what's the next African country that we can go to and then, you know, have Jamila come um, with me as well, too, so we could do, like, a whole, like, do the Top Hill thing for sure. And um, yeah, for South Africa, I think, is very, very high. It's on the list. very, 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 very high for I, me. Yeah, like, honestly, I, I don't know where else I would want to go right away. Just, it's been on the list for me. Yeah, because, you know, this is my third time in Africa. So I, I've been to Tanzania, I've been to Ghana, and then I've been to Kenya. So I was like, okay, I've been to east and west and back to east. I was like, let me go and holler at the south real quick. You Might know what I mean? Well. It just makes sense that the south should get it next, you know? So. I need to head south a bit. You need to head south a bit. That's where it's at. Yep. Definitely. We have somebody in the comments. They said, somebody in the comments says, Nasty C or Blackie? Speaking of South Africa. Okay, yeah. Shout out to Hindu. So, so speaking of South Africa, we got a question. They want to know, who would you pick between Nasty C or Blackie? Which which one would you say is uh your your top artist right now? Nasty C and Blackie. I I love I, I, I love. Okay, the the thing is, I love Nasty C for the motivation. Yeah, yeah. For the motivation, because Nasty C has has broken all barriers. He's, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've seen him in interviews with guys like Snoop, Ti, and all those guys, and he brings some of the guys from the states to. To, to South Africa, yeah. but at the same time, Blackie made it against all odds. Like if you could follow Blackie's story, it's like super amazing. So they both are my brothers because they both Zulu. Okay. So now what happens is mm -hmm. I'm both of them hard. Yeah. And, and I, I I I love for the youth to have uh, such great um uh, uh, such great people as inspiration because you can totally learn different things from both. You understand. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Nasty C is the king, is the king, and uh, and and Blackie is one of the greatest to ever do it. Like <laughs> I love both. I can't choose. It's like two brothers, two my little brothers. I have to choose from. Yeah. No, I, I love your answer because I would have said the same thing. I ain't Not gonna me. lie. <laughs> you get on my nerves. I I, lo I love them. I love them both because I I love Nasty C because that that's really. He's one of the major artists that introduced us to a lot of South African music and then African yeah. um, hip hop in general. Like, yeah, we didn't even know it was that lit for yeah, real yeah, until no. we ran across Nasty C. Yeah, so like, I really appreciate Nasty C for that. And then, you know, we heard that Blackie record. We heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, was my like, oh, man. My that was like our me. anthem for a year. <laughs> <laughs> that was like our anthem for a year. Like, Blackie music goes crazy. So, yeah, I love, I love both of them as, as well, too, man. Shout out to South Africa. You guys have a lot of talent down there, man. Major. Yo, yo, let me let me give a few shout outs to Go shout ahead. out to Nasty, shout out to Blinky, shout out to A Reese. Oh yeah, A Reese. Um, which is another young one. Shout out to Lucas Rap. We got a few of them. Like we those are guys who are pushing the SA sound. You know what I mean? So I support them like fully. Uh, I, I, those are the guys who are, who are gonna take our raps uh to the next level internationally. You understand? So we need to support them. With everything, like as much as we can. Yeah, I just love how supportive you yeah. guys are to one another. Like that is just yeah. I've been so seeing you guys amazing. collaborate with, yeah. with each other and everything too. Like I see Nasty do, does records with Blackie, who does records with Avery's. So it, it's really, really dope to see. Ka was, is Casper as well too? I think he's Casper's down there. But um, well, Casper's an OG. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see he did a record with uh, what's her name, Guapola or something like that. Like um. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that, that, fire. <laughs> that song is in my head, man. Yeah. That is funny. Yeah, and you check that um, uh, thingy. Ti just released. Uh, uh, I'm a piano joint, like Ti. Oh, oh wow, we gotta That's check amazing. that out. Yeah, we got two this. weeks ago. Yeah, like two weeks ago, and it's great. You gotta check it out. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm very like I'm very proud of um seeing I'm a piano music uh been like traveling the world and guys yeah. like Ti. 
who uh, guys that we grew up listening uh, listening up to uh, do, like adopting some of the sound that we're doing it shows that the world is looking um, yeah. what would you say is like your top artist that you would love to work with like if you had like one one car one phone call you had to make and and who's answering that phone you could work with you can give a beat to you can hop on a track with who who do you want to work with internationally or in africa you can give number them one it should be just the number one i know you got a favorite all right cool let, let, let me give you my, my my top five my top five please let me rather give you my top five <laughs> okay so uh i love uh big sean okay i do too big sean's dope i love big sean i mess with big sean yeah. there's an artist there's an artist there's an artist in essay called ko he's the greatest <laughs> okay he's the greatest so big sean is ko it's young ma it's young ma okay me yeah. okay and then it's McMill and it's uh it's, it's, it's the game. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Um, that you know was surprising. That's a fire list. I ain't gonna lie. That's a dope list. I, I, yeah, give us give us, give us some inspiration. Why why didn't why didn't folks? <laughs> so, so let me tell you why. It's, it's the same uh, question of uh, nasty versus blacky. You know, sometimes you can hear somebody rap and and you can't take anything. But one thing makes you makes you understand. Like the story on, uh, like who, who they are and what makes them them. Like they, everybody's got a unique story. So it's, it's it's more stories than it is lyrical. It's more about the content. <laughs> so those are the artists that I feel like I can relate with them in a major way. Mm -hmm. We are back, guys. I'm, we're we're on. For that, guys. Yeah, we we're on Zoom and Zoom Zoom gives us time limits. Yeah, they do. As soon, like as soon as uh, our, our little time limit came up, they started messing with my man's audio. I didn't like the way they was treating my man Fanny and Z when he came home, bro. Like that ain't right. That ain't right. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta treat our guests with respect. I don't know what they was talking about, man. <laughs> yeah, it's dirty. dirty, man. But we back. We back. Yeah, let's jump right back into this conversation. All right. Thank you, sir. And do shout out to you, man. Yes, man. That was in the morning featuring our boy Austin Toad. We really appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, How'd you like that song, Stanek? Sorry? How'd you like that song, the In the Morning song that we just played? We played it a couple times tonight. Uh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful jam. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Something to buy about, too, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we appreciate it, man. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I'm just thinking about, um, you know, coming back, man. So you said you're in Johannesburg, right? I'm in Johannesburg. Okay. Yeah, so I, I definitely want to check out Joe Berg. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way that we can, like, hit the three cities in one. Like, do a Joe Berg for a couple of days, do Cape Town a couple of days, go to Durban for a couple of days. I don't know. I know no, it I sounds like a lot. I th no, I think we're going to be able to do it. What I think, I think we need to partner up so you can tell us who we need to be doing business with so that we don't got to pay for it so we can stay a whole month. That's what we need. But, 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 but. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, tell me, tell me, you guys visit places like uh, the Big A. What do you guys prefer? Do you prefer the cities or you prefer the actual inner Africa? Or what do you guys prefer? Both. Cause, uh, I like both. Both. Where the women yeah. at, bro? He wants to <laughs> Where the women at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, women are all over, bro. They're all over. So, so, so what I think is, I'll take you to the deeper, deeper Kuzuru Natal. You know what I mean? Okay. So I, I want you to see the real Africa. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I definitely want to see that. Yeah, I want, I want to get immersed in all I of think, it. Yeah, I want, I, I, I want you guys to attend a, an African wedding to see how it is in an African oh. wedding. Well, baby, um, I know. I've been think, to a lot. I've yeah. never been to an American yeah. wedding. That's crazy. You've been I've only never been to American wedding. I've only been to African weddings. Yeah. Nigerian, yeah, Ghanaian, Sudanese. Yeah. So, so I, I would like to take you guys to African weddings. You know, when 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 a when a, young, when a boy reaches a certain age, uh, they go to the mountain to, um, to, to 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 become a man. Like the the, the something they do to go. So I heard they, about they that. I heard about that. You, play, you, play cultures, you, you get to fight animals, like wild animals and stuff like that. It depends. So, that as well is also interesting because you get to learn different cultures and how things are done this side. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to go to the mountains. I'm trying to go over there and see what's good. You know? become a man. Yeah, I'm, well, well, I'm a man already. Officially. I, I would I be an African man now. I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm going to the mountains. I want to go and test my strength. 
I want to fight a lion. Spend like maybe, yeah, I spent three months to 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 do uh three months about three months in the bush. Three months. With no with no camping gear, with no camping equipment or anything like that. I mean, so wow. they test your real survival skills. Wow. I'm sure. Yeah. That, are it all right? Do you know? Is there cases where you know some men don't make it? Some so some don't make it back. Yeah. I guess they weren't men then. So let me hey, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> All the families. Oh, boys. It's, like, it's like the, the, the real version of survival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like survival for real. No cameras, no, no helicopters. Right. Is this is this only for a certain tribe that does this? Or is this something that like most of the countrymen in South Africa do? A lot of tribes, even not just in South Africa, like all over Africa. Okay. That's yeah. And then, and, then, and then what happens is uh, rumor has it that uh, you get circumcised and not using surgical equipment. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. And, and they are like, how old, how old do they have to be, like, typically when they do this? Like, what, what age? Well, it depends on different tribes because i think there's the vendor tribe i think they do it from 12 and then there are other tribes that do like 16 17 and you know you know they, uh, it helps with you know if you could survive that chances of you ever committing suicide or anything like that are very minimal because you, right. you you've seen the worst yeah, yeah yeah so if you survive that life will just be a breeze yeah i i think honestly like you know here in the states i do, i do believe a lot of men here are soft and it's because we don't have any kind of way to like, I guess test men's manhood, like trying to prepare them for manhood. It's kind of like, if if they don't have a father figure in their life, they kind of leave it up to the streets to teach them. You know what I mean? And yeah. there's, there's very, there's not as many options. You know what I mean? And I think that's a really, really dope way. I think that like we have to start figuring out some ways to like, try to get boys to become men like some kind of like rites of passage and mm -hmm. stuff like that i think that will help out with a lot mm -hmm. of the issues that we have most you definitely know, here, you know yeah, but, but not to take away from the culture uh, it's not just the, the physical stuff physical side of thing like they, they also do a lot of uh, instill a lot of values you know, understand like certain ways of not treating women like yeah. respecting adults and because you know they say that say it takes a whole village to raise a child so right. The, the child has to accept the whole village as the parents, you know what I mean? So right. you can't smoke in front of adults, you can't drink, there's certain things you can't do in front of certain people. So yeah, so it also instills a lot of value uh, in them. That's respect, man. That's respect. Are you sure though? Like you guys look up to America so much, like you guys don't see how flawed and not right this place is? <laughs> We don't have no rules. There are no rules here. Yeah, laws, laws, schmalls, but there's no none of that here. Yeah, you know, you know what happens is, is everybody everybody um, uh, wishes they they could. Um, you know, you know what happens. We watch the music videos. We see the Bentleys, the Lambos, and all that stuff, and and the same picture. That the marketing, they, they paid us the picture that if you've got this, you've made it. If you ain't got this, you ain't a man. So a man gotta have a big screen TV, gotta have this car, gotta. So, so, so that's where we get it wrong. You understand? So, you know, TV can brainwash a lot of people. Of course. So, yeah, um, yeah if you see something uh, enough times, it's gonna convince you. You understand? Right. So that, that, that's what happens. So, what happens is when we start off, uh, we like for example we see hip-hop hip-hop to us is, is is what we see in america like ll cool j's and everybody else so now uh the more person matures and grows that's when they decide no let's do it our way let's try make it as african as possible we understand mm -hmm. so we we have those conversations uh, about should we uh keep using the american beats or should we create our own but now the problem is the problem becomes when when people want to make it internationally and they feel like they won't get understood in something that's not uh, uh similar to the american understand mm -hmm. uh where it, it's beautiful to see uh artists like java and shoma josie who are able to, to to go all the way to the bet's in yeah. the states using their authentic african sound on their beats you understand right so the the, the main thing is right there should i stay 
uh, uh, to myself or should I do something that's going to be commercially viable? viable? Right. I can, see, I can see how that can be confusing too because um, thinking about um, you guys artists right now, Tyler, you know, with that viral record, the water song that she just did, she's now yeah. nominated for a Grammy yeah. um, as well too. Um, I didn't know that she was South African until I did some research. You know what I mean? I had to do a little, I had to do a little bit of research. <laughs> I did a little bit of research. Yeah, I found out she was South African, you know. Um, so, so I, I, I get it, you know what I mean? But We also have those struggles here, too. So I mm -hmm. feel like, you know, all of our different regions sound different. And then when young artists are trying to break through and stuff like that, like you might have an artist from New York trying to sound like they from Atlanta and vice yeah. versa and things of that nature. If I could give you any words of advice, like here in America, we've all heard it already. And we always want something new. Yeah. Don't do it the American way at all. Do it your way. Do it your way. And we're gonna come we're gonna come to you guys because yeah, yeah Jamila's right. Like at one point everybody was trying to sound like New York. Like New York was the birthplace of hip hop. Mm -hmm. And then they took LA to come up with their own sound and their own style. And then people start gravitating towards that. And then you have Atlanta in the South, which has been on a crazy run and tear with, you know, trap music and stuff like that. Now everybody wants to sound like an Atlanta artist. Right now, I feel like we're in another transition period where people are trying to figure out where to go next because I don't know if you've seen this stat. We just um, um, talked about this on our last podcast, but um, apparently hip-hop sales are down 40% um, as of this year. So people are starting to buy less and less hip-hop music in the States, which we know if that's translating in the States, is also going to translate you know, in other world markets as well, too. So... But in the meantime, while that's going down, you have Afro beats and Latin music trending upwards. You know, see, it's, yeah. um, Afro beats is 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 a re is a you know style of genre that's getting played all over the place. Like I was in Kenya, they were playing Afro beats. I was in Colombia, they're playing Afro beats. Here in the states, we're playing Afro beats um, and stuff like that. So, and on my piano is yeah. like is right up there too. Because you know that it has that house music sound that that sound like which got really popular with you know beyonce the weekend drake redoing that kind of music i know drake drake actually got was it black coffee is black coffee from south africa as well too right um definitely yeah so you know drake had black coffee you know do some production on his work as well too so i would say stick to you guys sound you know what i mean and brand new something we never heard go crazy don't even <laughs> do something that they doing in south africa because we're gonna hear it like we're literally not not only is hip hop on a decline, our people here we're going out our way to get international artists. Yeah, and you know I really, I really appreciate the way uh, the American podcast be like um, reviewing some African stuff. Like that's that's great. I really love that because I really wish, like my wish is to at least every Black American gets a chance to visit the motherland at least. Yes. Yes. I understand. Just to experience different like I've been mean, to Miami, I've been mean, to the winter uh, winter conference, the winter music conference in Miami. You went to Miami? Uh, it was. You been to Miami? Oh man, we really gotta talk to Stan. I feel like we need to talk to him more often. Yo, that's our city. <laughs> Not so yet. Uh, so every March there uh, winter and this this spring I think music conference. So I, I would make it a point that I pull up and and then check out the beach parties, South Beach and everything and everything. So yeah. So but it's different from from I really love it for every child to come home. Yeah. I got the surname. Not just the name. Yeah, I, bro, I really agree with that. I, I do feel like every person of African descent needs to experience Africa. They need a travel period. There's yeah. so many people who are from America and have no idea how powerful their passports are and like where they can go, what they can see. When there's so many people around the world who who can't go to certain places just because they were born somewhere else. You know what I mean? So. But us as black Americans, we have a disconnect and a lot of us don't even realize that what we're searching for, what we're looking for, we can find it by just touching with the people that we come from, the continent that we come from. Like, I know stepping on the continent, how that felt for me 
like it, it completely changed my mind, changed my thinking. You know what I mean? I was just like, yo, like more people need to experience this, and we need to one connect thing, back with you. Okay, what's up? Like, now, how did you feel? Like, uh, I'm asking because like, maybe you can help. Um, how did you feel when you were in Africa? Like, yeah, did I feel safe when I came to Africa? Yeah, how did you feel? Like, just describe how you felt, like, yeah. overall. Um, so the very first country I went to was Tanzania, um, which was, you know, obviously in East Africa for, for the people who don't know. So, um, I felt very safe. Um, it was a little bit different because, you know, you have, you know, a lot of people who, who can recognize that I'm I, I'm African descent, but I don't look like I'm from here. You know what I mean? So I do have a lot of people, you know, asking me for money, asking me, asking me for help and stuff like that. But I also met a lot of people who were just like just happy that I was here. Um, one of the guys, yeah. the, one of the first guys I talked to um, was my tour guide in Tanzania. He was just like, you know, the Chinese come here, the European comes here. The Arabs come here, but why don't black Americans come here? And it really, it shocked me. I was just you like, you know what? Why we don't. The same way he was speaking to brainwashing. Yeah, we were brainwashed. We have As the a culture, worst, like they have mastered the brainwashing here. Like I think that we for our people, yeah, for our, not even just our people, even you guys, you guys have this impression of what it is here because of what they're selling and marketing, but it's really yeah. just brainwashing. Yeah, like I live in the DC area, and one thing that he mentioned to me was that, he's like, bro, I, I just want to see the White House. Like, I just want I just want to be able to look at it. Like, it, it just feels like I made it to heaven if I get there. Oh and my me, God, we ride past I, there and want to spit. I, I, <laughs> I live in DC, I worked in DC, so I literally drive past the White House like every morning. I'm just like, there go that thing. The White, <laughs> the white Men House but, and Obama's. But, but, <laughs> But it just it just goes to like the sep the separation of what we were told about y'all and what you guys were told about us. And instead of them telling us, we just need to like exit out that noise and come together and like us have conversation with each other, us collaborating with each other when it comes to this interview right here. You know what I mean? We're we're connecting and collaborating where this was not really a thing a couple of years ago where we can connect with somebody in South Africa. Um, and stuff like that. So, like, even for the ones like he said, he wished everybody could um, come to Africa. I honestly feel like, too, for all of us, um, but especially us in America, we need to just be connecting with Africans. Yes, we do. I, I that are not in America. Yeah. Let's start there because Africans here in America too, they don't really like us. I don't either. I don't really. I want to. I don't want to say that either because that is a narrative. That that is a strong narrative. When Africans come here, they don't mess with Black Americans and. They, they, I don't think it's like they don't mess with I'm us. I'm African. I can tell you exactly what the perspective is. Like, it's not that they hate us. They, and it's most foreigners don't really like us. Because, because they, they were told. Like we're ungrateful. No, they watch our work ethic. They're so, like, some people look at us and they're like, you're so lucky to, to be, be here. here. Right. And, but they don't also, but the, there's, that's where the disconnect comes. Because mm -hmm. they don't know really our story on why, why we're in the state that we're in here. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine, Building. You said what? You know what I think? Yeah. It's like, uh, let me make an example. Uh, we also experience something similar to that here in, in Africa sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing is, if I'm unemployed and then I see another person from another country and they come here and they get a job, I don't have a job. So, so in a way, it's like, um, I don't know if I could call it envy. Like, I feel like you taking away and it's, it's it's all like uh i could say defensive like it's it's, it's a defensive way mm -hmm. like imagine ima imagine if there's a rapper struggling to make it in the state mm -hmm. and now this rapper from south africa just pulls up in the state and is getting all the shows all the interviews mm -hmm. do you understand so i think it's things like those that the, it's like it's like it's like two kids one gets the toy now they, they're starting to look at each other funny because he's got the toy mm -hmm. and yeah. saying, why is he getting the toy and i can't I, I think sometimes it's things similar to those because you feel like maybe they think I want to take away and the other one feels like uh, you will take away. So I think sometimes it's the, the lack of, um, I don't know, but something similar to that, lack of opportunities balanced on both sides. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. I just think that we could connect 
better like even if we could just connect with people because you grew up i grew up in america for the most part i did time in africa and stuff like that but i feel like when i got to africa i didn't feel like i was in africa only because my house always felt like Africa because mm -hmm. I lived with an African, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I grew up culturally doing African mm -hmm. things going when we would go to um, places and stuff like that. Like I've been to weddings in America, but they were African weddings. You know what right. I mean? Like I was always mm -hmm. around That's other right. that, the culture, you know what I mean? So when right. I got to Africa, I was just like, oh my God, it's pretty much the same except for I really don't speak the language at all. Right. <laughs> I, I think when when it comes to us, we were so disconnected mm -hmm. from our roots and stuff like that. So being just, you know, growing up in just a black household, not connected to Africa, we're over here battling and, and trying to just get our basic human rights. Like, for the longest time, we black... We weren't even thinking about Africa. We, we weren't even thinking about Africa. We were just like, man, we just want to be able to drink from the same water fountain. We want to be able to go to the same schools. We want to be able to just buy a house. <laughs> you know what I mean? But we were we were prevented from doing so many things even being in this country so even though we were american we didn't have american rights and privileges even though we're living on the land so we are just now able to benefit from being an american and a lot of us don't have the education or the knowledge of what comes with that so there's a lot of miscommunication and uneducation of what we have you know what I mean? And so when you guys come over here, now we're like, oh, sh you know, we heard a whole different perspective about Africans. Now they're coming over here and now they're getting lit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know what I realized? You know what I realized? They can try and separate us and uh, maybe uh, um, make sure that you don't know anything about your history. Right. But when I look at the, 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 the resemblance, let me make an example. Right, <laughs> right, right. American you watch a future music video yeah, you yeah. see him in the strip club yeah, yeah. throwing some money on the news and i'm like thinking that's what we do in our weddings that's yeah yeah we our weddings. i didn't come to your wedding different things i'm like where did they get the thing and throwing money at the, at the ladies giving the ladies the money in that manner if i get married that happens to my wife or in, in other nigerian cultures and um i think in in the zulu culture when a girl turns uh, i think the age of maturity i think 21 same thing you yeah and so like that i don't know i don't know quite deep that, that these people are really related in some way no we are like, like i don't know that no, you're right. America does not have any original culture anyway. So even going back to like the sound of music that you want to do, all we do is copy and paste everything anyway. America is just a big it's, mixing pot. Yeah, Nothing it's, it's, is original. It's here. a land of immigrants. You know what I mean? The land was stolen. We came over here. We built it for them. And then a bunch of people started moving in. But when it comes to just our connection, like think about like there's been so many times they try to disconnect us. They, they told us that all you guys, y'all guys live in huts, you guys don't have houses, you guys live in bushes, and that's that's what Africa is. You know what I mean? They, I, I've heard a lot of stories from Africans coming to America telling them not to mess with black Americans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That we were lazy, we were ghetto, and we're not doing anything. Like, my daddy. Yeah. You talk about my mama right in her face just like that. <laughs> I swear to God. This, well, not to her, but like about her family yeah. and stuff like that. You'd be like, oh, those niggas. So, like, <laughs> and, they try to, and they try to disconnect. But one thing that always kept connected, because if you're an African and you come to America, you get stopped by the police, you're black. It doesn't matter what country you come from. Mm -hmm. you, you still look like us. And then, you know, when we come over to Africa, you know, we look like you guys. We look related. We, our cultures are we're still connected. And like you said, they can't break that connection. They can try to separate it for as long as we can, but we're eventually going to find our way back. Mm -hmm. And I see that happening now. Yeah. You, you can hear it in the music. You can hear it in the collaboration yeah. of the music from your country, South Africa, from Nigeria, from King. Like the music is a universal language. The dancing, the Look dancing, the connecting to the to the Afro beats and I'm a piano. It's like exactly. it's in your blood. Exactly. It's it's just it's it's yeah. natural. So like I see it happening, and this is why we do this podcast as well too, because we're all about bridging the gap between the culture through music, through business, through relationships. Like we want to see us come together and us making this. I love it. I love it. Yo, we're getting into the soccer mode too. We get into that. That's a soccer jersey, right? <laughs> yes. What we do is we put the, We've decided um, instead of using so much of the European influence, because you know Africa, we've also got our artists from way back. 
Yeah. So we've got Zulu patterns. Yeah. We've got uh, Sufi patterns. We have Ndebele patterns. Every you can tell what uh, tribe a person is from by the way they dressed and they 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 patterns. Or you could just look at somebody's house mm -hmm. and tell that. So what 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 what, what uh, homies like this? I'm like this is not my label, but it's something I'm proud of. When I look at what guys are here doing, I understand this is the Sufi tribe, and they took the, oh. uh, the, 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 the they made something. Very cool. We understand. So it's, it, it is what it is. It's, it's about time we start supporting our own. Yeah, you know I, mean? I agree. Jamila wants to see the back of her. Can you show us I again? I had another pattern on the back. <laughs> Yeah, that's fire. Yeah, I like them a lot. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that don't see. and that's another thing too. Like if you you black and we we just produce dope stuff, dope clothes, dope music, dope culture. Like it's just it don't like you know what I mean. Everything, man. We are the culture. It's the culture. right, man. And we and we need to we yeah. need to bridge this culture back together, man. I, I I just I love seeing it, man. We gotta come. We gotta come to South yeah. Africa. You got a party with you, man. Anytime you in the States, let me know, man. Especially you end up in Miami again. Don't come to Miami again. Don't call me. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so you guys are at the DMV. Yeah, the DMV. Yeah. See, you hip. Yeah, man. We in the DMV. Yeah, cool. I uh, know. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up. Yeah, as man. Soon as, as soon as my, my levels drop, because, you know, I'm, I'm high risk right now. As soon as I get to the low risk, I'm traveling again. Yes. How long will it take you to get to that level? I think it's going to take about a year. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's going to take about a year. Understand? And, and, and they're not that bad. You know, you know, you know the, the, the oppression, the side, it's not like it is that side because the system there is white. Yeah, yeah. No, so it really side, is. Yeah. Because one thing they want us to do, they want us to get uh, to, to, to become productive. So as much as I could be on house arrest, so if I have a reason to leave the house, like producing some stuff, uh, then they more they 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 they're more than willing to give me the, the permission. You understand? Because when I look at uh, when I look at uh, cases of guys like Nick Mail of reason they be going to prison and stuff like that, hey, it's better this side. <laughs> it's better yeah, this side. You spoke to you rehabilitation. There is zero rehabilitation. Our prison system is really it's just a, a modernized. Door slavery system it's, it's a revolving it's door simply it's very hard for people to leave the prison system and actually be rehabilitated back in society typically they end up back in the prison because it's it's it's, well, it's really messed this up side, it's, it's, uh, well this side they, they do a better job because yeah. um, you've got all sorts of courses you've got now when you leave prison there's a certain uh, certificate or courses you can't uh leave it out so you gotta know that you did this you did that Things that I want to qualify you to get employment and all the other stuff when you get outside. So it's a, it's, it's a must that when you're doing um, uh, what do you call it, uh, the GDE in America. GED, yeah, GED, yeah. When you're doing, when you're doing um, uh, let's say life or things like those, there's certain uh, courses you gotta have uh, just to just to uh, be sure that you're gonna do something very productive with your life when you get outside. Right. So yeah, so I, I really appreciate that as far as the legal system is concerned. Because you guys right. care about so, your so, country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I love. This is the best country in the world. Oh, yeah, we've got a lot of things to, yeah, we've got a lot of things to, to work on, but I just love how it's uh, we've taken it from uh, in '94 when the racism apartheid ended to now. Right. Yeah, man, it's, 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 it's some work. We've done something. Yeah. I have hear a lot of great things about South South Africa. Like, I, I hear, like, just in, in the rankings when it comes to all the different, you know, 54 countries that's on your continent, mm -hmm. South Africa is always, you know, praised in a lot of high regards. You guys have a lot of beautiful scenery, for one. That's I mean, I want to go see. Like, most. I look at pictures of, of, you know, Cape Town. I'm just like, that looks like heaven beautiful forget the white house i'm trying to go over there <laughs> i'm trying to go to cape town yeah. you know what i mean but i'd like to also uh give a shout out to everybody from all across africa is watching and i think we should unite let's work this is the best platform to bring uh different nations together different countries because we're all one yes. and uh, i think uh, let's just look up let's work let's do something you know I mean? absolutely bro I love that you said that. Yeah. I, I know there's 54 countries in Africa, but I like to look at it as 55. And I think that the 55th country is the diaspora. 
all the black Americans, the black Caribbeans, you know, the black people who, all the lost children of Africa, this we're still connected to you guys. You know what I mean? And I think, like you said yeah. earlier, that we should come back home to Mother Africa, connect with each other, collaborate with each other, help each other, mm. like break down these borders and like let's let's work together, let's build together. You know what I mean? Like at least I, get a name, at least get a name to start. At least get a name because people be complaining about uh, we got these names from slavery, whatever, whatever. At yeah. least try to change that back. You might not know your original uh surname or tribe but at least get a like start from scratch find something that, that that's gonna show that you are african because you are african like it or not you are african right you can't I can tell you you're not african because that, that won't change anything you are african you're black like me yeah <laughs> yeah no you're absolutely right and i had a really powerful conversation about this with somebody um before too when i was in kenya and you're right that a lot of what's holding us back is the fact that we're still carrying around carrying around slave names you know what i mean a white and, man's legacy oh yeah and and last your name is your legacy and i think you're right it does start with that I, and i've been thinking about it too like changing my last name because people do it all the time it's not like this is like yeah. it's like it's all of like white people change their name before like like when you hear johnson or williamson like those were sons of william those were sons of john mm -hmm. like that's how they got their mm -hmm. last name you know what i mean so there's nothing wrong with changing your name and starting a new legacy for you and your family. And um, yeah, I completely agree with you on that, man. That's, yeah, we, we should have. Because um, be whatever the, the situation is in America, like you guys, you guys that, that side really um, have learned quite a lot from this, whether it's IT or whatever, there's so much you can come and contribute back right. home. We understand there's so much you can contribute back home. Yeah. You understand? So make first it happen. Of all, make it happen. <laughs> Okay. I said, make it happen. You can, you can definitely be the the piece, the glue to the uh to this puzzle. You know, you know how much it is to build a a, a, a hut, like a house hut. Like how much? Hunt. How much? Uh, okay, let me try to convert this in dollars. Maybe three hundred dollars. I mean, you don't need that much. Three hundred dollars. I build you ten yeah. nights. <laughs> We're sending the wire. We're all, no, like, I would love to get to African real estate. <laughs> we could go ahead and get a top. We could get the top pill studio popping off in uh, Joburg. No problem, man. No problem. I got nail salons yeah, and everything so ready to come. Is, 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 so what I'm saying is coming to Africa and and, and not being able to build a house is, doesn't make sense. Come through, build your own mud hut, stuff from the bottom. Let's build this country. Let's build yeah, this yeah. continent. Yeah. And, and I will say this, too, because, like you said, no place is perfect. And we do have to address the, the corruption that there are in some of these countries as well, too. I don't want everybody to think it's, it's, it's all honky-dory honky and rainbows. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I recognize that a lot, of, a lot of the countries in Africa have just got their freedom as well, too. You guys have just broken away from colonialism and stuff like that, and you guys are figuring it out now. But... There, there does have to be some kind of way to fix the corruption because there are a lot of people that I know who will invest in African countries and they think that they're buying a plot of land or some houses and then they end up getting there and it's not there. Or <laughs> You know what I mean? So, like, we, we can't allow that to continue happening. So we have to have some accountability as well, too, to fix, to fix these issues among ourselves. We can fix these issues. These issues are not as major as we think. This is stuff that we can, that we can fix. You know what I mean? Like... I just thought about something. You know what we need in all the countries? What? Little Americas. <laughs> like where? Yeah. Like you know how we got Chinatown Black and Wall stuff Street. like that. Yeah, we need. And we need. Places. And we need little Africas here as well too. Most like th there's a lot of African communities here. Like I'm. I'm but they offer. I'm not gonna lie. We don't might not call them that, but they have. Them. Yeah, they have. Like, them. We know where to go. Like I know when I want to go see some Africans, I'm going over Virginia. I know exactly where my Sudanese people are. I know the Ethiopians are going to be literally right next door. You know what I mean? I'm going to, Silver I'm going to the grocery store. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. they have their like they have community. Yeah. Here. Yeah, and 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 like you said, a black expat community. You know, um, in South Africa, in Kenya, in Ghana, and then you know we can make like a black. You, you said what? What you said? I'm saying, when was the last time you had some jollof rice? Some jollof rice? The last time I had jollof rice was in uh, Ghana. Oh, I had some last week. I mean, I talk about real jollof rice. I had... I, I did the African... Oh, you I, don't have no African... 
in Baltimore. Y'all got African restaurants. We got African restaurants, but like, listen, like I went to stay at um, an African woman's house. I stayed at her house. <laughs> she cooked me some real jollof rice. She got the fish right out the water. Brought it right to the table. Like, damn, you can call that with your hands? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put, she cooked it like real homemade jollof rice. And I know there's a war going on. I don't know if South Africa is in this jollof rice war. I know there's Nigeria, there's Ghana, there's, Ghana, there's Senegal. Yeah, in South Africa, we, 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 we have like the Nigerian and the Ghanaian jollof rice. We don't have our own, but we do have the, the, the Ghanaian. We have the, so you understand, so... We also love some some of the, those Nigerian cuisines. What are some like traditional South African cuisines? Do you guys have your own as well too, or um, do you guys like kind of like you know uh, collaborate with other countries? Yeah. So, so, so uh, in South Africa, we have like eleven official tribes and languages. Okay. So we've got like a lot, and all the tribes are rich with culture, the food, the different music, dress codes, everything. So we've got a lot of. Uh, he need to get yeah. to sales. He got me wanting to go to Africa. I ain't gonna lie, yeah. Like I stand like, it. I ain't gonna lie. I want to book my trip to South Africa so bad right now. I think South Africa is is definitely my next African I country. I called him this morning and told him that we need to just book our flight somewhere. I yeah. was like, that's all we need to do is just get out of the country. Let's just go to Africa. That's what I just told him. And then I guess we didn't know where to go, but I, you really sold it. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. You sold South Africa. I think South Africa is definitely. <laughs> So I mean, for me, it was I found a really great price. So I went, I went to Kenya, I went to Nairobi, and I found a round trip flight for eight hundred dollars uh, U.S., which is like really cheap um, compared to what it normally was. I got really lucky, but um, when it came, when it comes to South Africa. Um, in the DC area, I think they just opened up some new um, round trip flights from the DC to, I believe, Cape Town. It's either Cape Town or Joburg. So Cape I think Cape Town is about a thousand dollars if you go to the end of the month. <laughs> yeah, Cape Town's about a, about a thousand right now. But I'm really enjoying this conversation. Top oh, Hill in the gosh. chat right now. I hope you guys are enjoying this conversation as much as we are, man. Like I'm so glad to connect with our brother here. Shout out to my brother Lamick in the building, man. He said great conversation. Um, it most definitely is. He said y'all re y'all reacted to Tyler before. Shout out to Indu. He said y'all reacted to Tyler before she blew two songs of hers, and oh. with the latest one, it's crazy because y'all said it sounds like they trying to hard blow her, uh, blow trying to blow her on her side. Y'all were right, and they finally did. Yeah, man, like it's so crazy. Like we react and listen to so much music, it be it be blowing my mind. Like oh shoot, we did hear her before and stuff like that. Yeah, we definitely did react to Tyler. And uh, I'm so happy for her success and, and you know her being nominated for the Grammys. And that water record is fire. And and that dance was fire too. She Shout, out to <laughs> Shout out to she Tyler. Shout out to Tyler. I'll give her any kind of Dasani bottle that she needs, you know? <laughs> Not Dasani. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. I'll give her that Fiji. Let me let my bad. Tyler gets she gets some Fiji water. <laughs> <laughs> Jamila just over here looking at all the airports in, out in South Africa right now. I mean, I'm just scrolling through. <laughs> just scroll. It's only about a thousand dollars. Only a thousand. Only a thousand dollars. Only a thousand dollars. All right, we got our brother Stanick back into the building, man. Um, I already knew that this episode was gonna go like this. I ain't gonna lie, like, cause like I said, Stanick is family, bro. Like, we don't have to talk all the time and stuff like that. But I could just tell by. The kind of man that you are, bro, like the what you put into your music, your work ethic, like, like even down to your promo video. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say it live on air. That you had the best promo video sent to Top Hill, man. I'm gonna give you a round of applause for that, man, too, man. This brother be working, bro. I appreciate that, man. I was like, yo, let me let me put it on some effort. Shout out to Top Hill, man. Like, yeah, show them a bit of what we're going to talk about you know what i mean yeah man. and we appreciate that because you'd be so surprised how many pe other people may get the opportunity sometimes and just don't take it as serious as you do and i think that's why you're going to be super successful and that's why we're just so glad to have you like in our family yeah so i, I appreciate that uh I i've set the standards so i'm sure the next one is going to be <laughs> they they better because yeah you definitely set the standard because whenever somebody want to come on the Top Hill podcast I'm sending them your videos like yeah this is what we need 
<laughs> this is what we need. Um, Stanek, before we let you go, brother, is there anything else you want to tell the people about what you got going on? Anything else about you? Um, you know what I mean? I'm going to give you your, your final thoughts, your final words. Um, what do you have coming next for the people, man? Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so um, I'd like to invite everybody to follow me, Stanek NMZ, on all uh, social platforms. Uh, Twitter, no, not Twitter, um, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and then uh, YouTube, especially YouTube because I, I upload a lot of content. So again, it's Stanek NMZ uh, on Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. And I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it busy. Um, I've got a lot of... Uh, uh, content. I've got music dropping. I'm dropping uh, my my latest song uh, in two days from now. I've already uploaded it. I'm just waiting for the notification. And I've got the video. The music video is dropping in January because I think I'm already too late for the December rush. Now I mean, it's so okay. yeah, for real. I really appreciate that. Um, and if you're in South Africa, support a brother. Get the Puma Gimme merch. Get the Puma Gimme merch. Get some of that. Support the local brothers around. I mean. Let's see you guys pulling up in shows. So all the latest merch Listen. right here. Listen. I mean, how do yo, we get that? I, I need it right here. Do you guys ship internationally or do I have to come there to pick it up? Let me know. Yeah, bro. Send me, send me the address. It's on me. It's on me. I promise you. Oh, easy. You are... Easy. Done. Done. I'm going to send it to you tonight. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yo. And with all of his information, guys, it's going to be tagged here in the title, in the description. We're going to make sure... We support our brother. We support our family. Make sure you guys, if you guys are a fan of Top Hill, you guys are a fan of Stanek and MZ, man. So make sure you guys follow him, subscribe to him. And uh, yeah, bro, you already know. Anything you need from me, bro, I'm here for you, man. Um, I know Jamila as well, too. I remember, like, you asked me to hop on a, a skit uh, before. That joke was fire. That joke was lit, man. I was just so happy to be a part of that. I was so happy to be a part of that, man. I'm Ms. J. E. Miney. I really appreciate it. Uh, the rest of the Top Hero family, and I hope that uh, from today, uh, you know what I mean, we keep we will we'll, we'll work forward, and we will document everything when you guys get to South Africa. I really appreciate that. Yes, yeah. yes. It's, that's going to be a oh my god. I think it's going to be sooner girl. than you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're going to make that. We're, that's going to happen. I promise you. That's my going goal to happen. is to find somewhere and not come back here. I'm really so over this place. <laughs> Like I'm so over this place. I ain't gonna lie. Like I, I, I do. I would love to have like dual citizenship or have some kind of like home base in on the continent as well too. So, um, like I said, I've, I've been, I've been the Ken- Kenya's in the running. I ain't gonna lie, Kenya's. I love Kenya, man. I love Kenya. Yeah, I love Kenya, man. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I heard South Africa could give Kenya a run for his money. So I'm, I'm gonna look. I'm, I'm gonna check out South Africa as well too, man. Man, we were just talking this morning. I said we need to do a, a tour of all of Africa. Yeah, especially the places that we don't. That's not trending. That we don't hear about. That we don't know about. I'm sure that's where the real gems are. I know a guy. Like you I, know I, a guy. I, I, I know a guy. I know know a guy. You know know a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we might <laughs> we might be able to make that happen. I'm gonna tell you as soon as we get off of here. Okay. Um, if you guys like the outro that's getting ready to come on here, you guys need to know that it is the artist that is on this interview. Okay, so yeah. make sure if you guys need a jingle or something like that, that you make sure you're hitting up this great South African artist. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. once again, we want to thank Stanek and MZ. <laughs> Zed. In, in, in Zed. <laughs> <laughs> for for Grace in the Top Hill podcast. Um, once again, man, thank you so much, brother, for being here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. And um, yeah, man, this is your boy, Mr. Top Hill Pod, aka E Money Boss. And I'm your girl Jamila with her own boss. And we out. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Top, top, top. Hill, top, hill.